At 22 years old, I became a 100K a month online fitness coach. I ended up going viral all over the internet, generating as much as 87 million views in one month. I spoke on Fox Sports Radio twice. I had a stranger recognize me at the beach, and a whole lot of crazy things went down. My name is Jack Bly, and in this video, I'm going to share the exact journey, all the brutal hardships. I'm going to be very transparent in this video. Um, so if you are a coach and you want to build your coaching business, it's going to be absurdly valuable to you. Uh, I'm going to share exactly what I did to go from zero to 100K a month. So let's go ahead and hop right in. So this right here, this is like the, the cool thumbnail, the cool like transformation that everyone sees. Um, no one really sees like what the hell took place between here um, and here. Right, there's a whole lot that went down. Um, it was not all, you know, sunshine and rainbows like everyone you know makes it out to be on the internet. Um, so I'm going to go over like what was truly required to get here. Um, it was not easy. So I'm going to start the, the very start of my journey as a dishwasher. So I have like a bunch of pictures here in a timeline. I'll literally just go from, you know, start to finish or start to where I'm at now. Um, so 2016, um, I was, you know, 16 years old here and I was started washing, you know, uh, dishes for minimum wage. Got these, these arm beams are popping. I was working out still. Um, but you can see me in this freaking ugly yellow uniform. Um, that was at my parents' house. And I literally, I made minimum wage here, you know, job was what it was. Um, one thing I did learn here, a very important lesson. Um, I think most people don't even learn this to this day, like being like 40, 50 years old, see people complaining about this on the internet, which is crazy, is like, you know, you are paid like what you're worth. Like your, your skill sets determine how much you're paid. Like me right here as a dishwasher is like minimum skill sets. There, there's literally like no skill sets required. Like it's just like you know, washing a dish, like a dishwasher could do that. They have machines to do this job for you nowadays. So of course, like, why would they pay me much? Why would they pay me more than minimum wage? There's no reason to. And so I actually accepted this fact. It's a hard fact. I didn't go out and, you know, protest and like go raise the minimum wage. Like I deserve more. I, I, I realized, hey, look, I need to skill up. If I want freedom, if I want to make more money, I need to skill up. So that's what I began to do. I started like, okay, let me start a business. And I went down this whole rabbit hole. This started in 2016. All right, so I started pressure washing driveways. So this was my first official business here. Um, you see, I, I had this, uh, you know, pressure washing, uh, pressure washer gig. This was from, uh, this is my dad's. Um, he just let me use it. But I would literally go around the neighborhood, like where, where I lived in, I would knock on doors every single weekend, like like early in the morning, like once the sun came up, 7.30 a.m., like we'd probably wake some people up. It was kind of rude sometimes. <laughs> but but uh, me and uh, uh, my best friend at the time, uh, we, we did this together. And we would just go around the neighborhood every weekend, knock on doors. And honestly, like for, you know, 16 year olds, we made pretty decent money doing this just off pure work ethic. And we'd knock on doors and our pitch, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it was a good pitch. We we'd probably said something like, Hey, um, we're, we're pressure washing driveways. Do, do you want yours pressure washed? Like something super simple like that. Um, and we got yeses. Like we got gigs. Like every time we went out, we'd probably make, you know, a hundred, 200, 300 bucks like a day doing this. I'm um, just working the mornings. So this was, I did this for, I don't know how long, probably like at least a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, definitely went hard in the, the summer times. Um, but yeah, this, this is what we did. Like in the hot, like we live in Florida. So hot, like Florida sun, we were pressure washing driveways. Look at that, look at that transformation, by the way. Like look at that, beautiful, beautiful work. Um, that's what we did. And I didn't realize it at the time. Obviously, like this is starting to gain some sales skills, some communication skills. Um, some very basic business skills of, okay, we're getting money coming in, got expenses as well, got to pay for, you know, the gas in this thing, transportation, all that stuff. Um, so that's the first business I did right here. This is where it started. And then I started to, you know, dive into more ha rabbit holes of stuff of how to make money. I started uh, flipping phones just on eBay. So I would buy them like locally for cheap, you know, low, low ball people. And I would flip them and sell them on eBay for, for more money. And I, this was actually a pretty easy gig, like made some pretty good money doing that. Um, Actually, oh man, side story. I'll, I'll, I'll mention this though, because it's one of the real things that happened. I got robbed um, once. Yeah, I got robbed once. Um, attempted robbery twice though. <laughs> so I remember, I'll tell this story because it's pretty crazy. I remember I was selling this iPhone. I went to this this kind of this school. It was late at night too. And this kid I was selling it to, he was probably like the same age as me. Apparently, who's a student, his mom supposedly gave him money. He's like checking out the phone. I give it to him like, yeah, yeah, you know, this is, you know, the iPhone, whatever, you know, six or seven or whatever. Um, you know, everything works. It's all great. He's like checking it out. I'm like, oh, I'm like, cool. Like, whatever. He's going to buy it. It's all cool. And he was taking forever for some reason. Like, he was taking so long to check it out. I'm like, okay, like, come on, man. Like, are you going to buy it or like, is it, or no? 
And all of a sudden he's like slowly like walking away like with the phone in his hand. It's very suspicious. And then all of a sudden he just like makes a sprint for it and he's running like full speed. And so what I do, I'm like, I don't even think my instincts just kick in and I start sprinting after him. And we're running around like the back of the school and literally just like chasing him for probably a good like minute and 90 seconds, just like full speed. And I'm just still like, I'm probably like 10 feet behind him. And eventually like he just stops. And he's, I guess he's like out of breath or something. And then he's like, it's a prank, bro. It's a prank. It's a prank. And he hands me the phone back. Like, <laughs> so that was, that was the attempted robbery. Um, and then another time I did actually get robbed, which that was, that was annoying. That was frustrating. It was a stupid part. I, I went to the hood basically to sell a phone. Um, this guy got in my car and, um, you know, we negotiated the price beforehand, you know, it's, let's say it was like 400 bucks or something. I'm like, and he's like, cool. Like, I'll do it. Um, let's do it for like, you know, 250 or something like, like some, some BS. And we already like agreed on price before I, I drove there. I'm like, no man, like we already agreed to, you know, 400. So, and he's like, nah, nah, nah. He was like, F that. And he, he just like, he had the phone. He was like in my passenger seat. I don't know why he like walked in my car either. That was pretty sus. But he just like grabbed the phone and he like burst. He like ran out and just ran into the woods. And I like, I was just like in my car, like I had my seatbelt on. And so like before I could react, like he was already, you know, 30 yards the other way. And I was just like pissed driving home. I just got robbed. So <laughs> that was the, the downsides of that business. Um, That was, that was interesting, interesting time, but still made some good money. Um, moving on to this thing, um, this was when I tried to basically start an e-commerce store. It's like, I believe I called it patriotic products and I had like a bunch of, uh, you know, America, you know, apparel and stuff. And this was like around, I think 4th of July was coming up. So that kind of inspired me. And I was trying to get into e-commerce. Um, this, I, I'd never sold a product. I bought, I don't know, probably a hundred, 200 bucks worth of products, but I never sold the thing. Um, so that stunk, but you know, whatever. Um, and I, I have a big lesson here. I'm going to unveil of like all this journey right here. Um, very soon. It's a very important lesson that if you don't lose, like you are not going to, you're not going to make it. Um, and then, uh, next thing was I traded, I day traded a lot of stocks. You can see me, my, my uh, I asked my, my roommate to take a picture of me here. I don't know. I was trying to be cool. There's nothing to document it. Um, so this is a picture of, you know, stocks and stuff, a bunch of, you know, moving averages and stuff, all these lines and crazy stuff. I learned this, like I, I studied it like crazy. Um, I never was really too profitable doing this. Like I had some profitable months, but I also lost money some months. Um, and this was also, this was in my dorm room, my, my first year of college. I went to Florida State University. Um, this was my, my desk, um, literally crammed right next to the bed. And I had, it was so like, it's very small. Like, as you can see, like everything, like I have a printer right there. I have a bunch of books. I have a TV literally right there. A very small space to work. Um, that's how it was. Um, so that was that. I, I did that for probably like multiple years just like trying to make it profitable but this like big thing i learned here was like i, I became like too emotional with decision making like especially with stocks or in businesses applies as well like you have to be very rational and data driven like for stocks for example <laughs> i say this even though i've never really traded them like profitably consistently um you have to like make trades according to your system like period your your emotions cannot play a part in it at all same thing with business like if you get you know, you hop on sales calls, you get three no's and you get very irrational and emotional and pissed off. Like, oh my gosh, like it doesn't work anymore. Let me change the offer and let me change everything. You like change up your offer completely. That's an irrational decision or you don't have a good data set to make decisions off of. So that's like part of like looking back, it's a part of the, the problems I had then was I was making emotional decisions. All right. I couldn't stay rational and just execute a system. So that's what plagued me here. Um, and then what happened next? Um, I, and so this is my first year of college and I, you know, started to drink and party a lot for the first time ever in my life. I was a pretty good kid growing up, but got into college and started drinking a lot. This is actually, I was extremely drunk and, um, this is like me, uh, you know, slumped over on my bed. I guess I'd like threw up and stuff. And, uh, basically the, the RA, you know, called like, I don't know, campus police or something. Cause I was like passed out or something. I was not responding. And, um, I, like my, my roommate told me, my, my uh, sweet mate, he told me that he was like yelling my name. I wasn't responding. He was like two inches from my face. He's like, Jack, Jack. And I'm like not responding. So very dangerous and scary situation. I don't really, I don't remember this at all. Um, anyways, you know, like amb ambulance came in and rushed me to the hospital. And um, I remember like flashes of this. I remember one thing that was kind of <laughs> interesting detail um, was I remember basically like lying to the cop 
like he's asking me like if I drink anything and I'm like nope nope nothing at all I was like I don't know I was lying because I was underage and I was trying to like I don't know be legal or something and then the paramedics came and I actually told them told them the truth so like I <laughs> I knew like who to lie to and who not to lie to but I don't know um I, I went to the hospital anyways had alcohol poisoning um and I just kind of slept it off um, and this actually was because I had um, antibiotics in my system. I didn't know you are not supposed to drink when you have antibiotics you're taking. So that happened, and I was I was really like pissed off and disappointed, I kind of like ashamed of myself out of this um, for good reason. You know, I was drinking a lot, partying, and ended up in the hospital. It was like just disgusting. Like I started to become disgusted myself in that. And this is like this like slowly um, resulted in a change of like I want to get like out of this kind of like party environment. I want to you know, continue working on, my, on like business stuff and improve myself and like get freedom. Um, so this, we'll, we'll, t we'll touch on that more later, but this really sparked, like I need to change my environment and I need to like level up. Like This is not like what I value. I, I don't value like parties and stuff like, yeah, it's fun, but I mean, th there's more things to life than this. Um, next thing after that, I tried uh, drop shipping basically. So I purchased some watches and I did like photo shoots. Like I literally went to this Canyon thing, really cool Canyon spot. I think this is in Georgia somewhere. Um, and you know, took these pictures of these watches, wrote up these ads. And I think I actually, I did sell like a few of these, I believe, um, but didn't really profit any money with it. Again, I quit soon after. And so big lesson, we're going to bring this all together right here. Like literally, this is about three years of work on various different businesses here. Here's what was taking place. Hopefully this is a big lesson and aha moment for you as it was for me. Um, we get the emotional cycle of change taking place. So I started these new businesses, uh, pressure washing and phones, um, uh, e-commerce, stock uh, trading, and then drop shipping here. And it all started in this cycle. I had uninformed optimism. I saw some guru or someone online who was killing it. Um, this was actually just like, this was probably like sheer, just like will of, of me trying to make money right here. Um, but anyways, I had this uninformed optimism. That, oh, it's going to be great. It's so easy. I see this guy's making a ton of money. It's easy, simple. Let me just do this. And so you start it and then you quickly realize informed pessimism. There's like these crappy parts of the business. Like, holy crap, it's kind of hard. Like I didn't realize I had to do this. So you know, with, uh, you know, this e-commerce, I had to realize, oh, how do I drive traffic? Like I have the, the website up, like, hooray. Like now, like, why is no one buying? Like there's no one on the website. Like, how do I fix that? There's all these problems that come up in every business. And you realize there's, you know, these, you know, skeletons in the closet of each business, these bad things you have to figure out how to do. That's informed pessimism. And then the valley of despair hits. This is where you feel hopeless, where you failed, where, you know, we launched, I remember we launched this e-commerce store it was like a weekend. We we're like, oh, we're launching. Let's go. We're so excited. And then like the whole weekend passed. We had like zero sales. And then we we're just like, you know, sad. We we're just depressed. We're like, what the heck? We're like, man, <laughs> like this sucks. And so my tolerance for failure was very low at this point in my life through these three years. Um, and so this resulted in me repeating steps one through three over and over and over and over again through different businesses. So ask yourself, have you been repeating this cycle one, two, three over and over and over again? with all these different opportunity vehicles and businesses. Because what happens is you get to this point and you think it's easier to just start a new business because it's shiny, it looks new, and you have uninformed optimism about the opportunity rather than keep on going. But when you do this cycle over and over again, you will not find success. You won't. Until you learn the lesson of, hey, I need to actually commit to this and overcome the value of despair, overcome these problems and fix them in the business. Because every single business is like this. So that's a big lesson I learned there. And I learned this in 2019 when I started this, my, you know, fitness coaching company, 2019. And so we started this and I ended up committing to this. This was obviously the thing that made me like first real money in my life. I'm um, committed to this for, you know, three, four years plus and actually saw some results, but it took a really long time. So here's a picture of um, me and my business partner, Gabe. Um, we started this business together and we would literally go to um, this local community college that we live by. We go to the study room, literally like sun up to sundown, like every single day. Um, and we were like filming videos and stuff here. So that's why like all the books are stacked up and it looks weird. So we were like filming videos and like ads and stuff. We were trying to figure things out. And we worked like our tails off. And I was abusing caffeine. Like I was drinking a ton of caffeine, energy drinks, pre-workout. I, I remember I used to sip pre-workout throughout the day. Like just like constantly. Like I was, I used to, I remember it got up to like a thousand milligrams of caffeine per day. Something crazy like that. Um, so that was that time we worked really hard and we actually like got very little results for 16 months. So for 16 months of time, 2019 through like 2020, like midway through 2020 or so, 
literally zero dollars in profit zero dollars in profit that we took home during this time period which is just like absurd when you think about it. like it's a long time like most people and definitely me the old me would absolutely quit but i saw this somewhere i saw this graphic i, I was i heard about this and i'm like holy crap like i have to commit i have to keep on going i'm just going to keep on going i'm going to commit to this no matter what i'm going to make this thing happen um and anyways um we we did sign clients but our business structure was very stupid where we had so many expenses we had like a team of like coaches that did the coaching for us and it was a very stupid business model but besides this fact like we i remember we started the business in i think it was may yeah may of 2019 like right after my birthday and then september so a few months later we actually did sign our first clients here 69 dollars. his name was tuffy <laughs> and i remember i was so excited like this is like amazing this is like holy crap like it's happening internet money this thing is real like we can do this thing I was so freaking excited that night. Um, I was on the phone with my business partner. Like, it just happened. And we were freaking excited. And uh, so we, we go to sleep. Um, me and my business partner were, were in different cities, by the way. So I was in Tallahassee going to uh, college, and he was back in Orlando, um, our hometown, where we went to high school. And so we, we signed our first client. And we go to sleep, freaking pumped. Like, we're ready to work. Like, let's do this thing. This business is real. The next morning, I wake up get this text from Gabe, my business, my business partner. And he says, I'm like, um, Tuffy canceled. Um, we had to refund him like literally the, the next day. And so I was just like, what? I remember like seeing this text and I was just like, I felt so defeated. I, I it was in the, in the bathroom of my apartment. I just like collapsed to the bathroom floor and I just sit on the floor for like 10 minutes, just like staring at the walls, like contemplating, like what the heck? Like we just worked for, what is this? Like four or five months our first client finally signed and you know now he's refunded and so that was a huge like huge setback at least mentally we just felt so defeated but you know we kept on going this is our website our first website that we had by the way we thought a website was so important which by the way it's like it's definitely not like do not even worry about a website if you're just starting your coaching business now like don't even don't build a website it's a waste of time waste of money um yeah that was that was one of the first stories i, I remember um, and, uh, flash forward 2019 to like 20, 20, like the first ounce of success was like probably like 2021 was when things started to uptick. That's when I, I remember I made my first, you know, 10 K month. I actually brought in 10 K and I felt so rich. I felt like, I felt like the man I was driving in my, my 2004 Honda Accord <laughs> blasting music. I, I, I felt so good. man. I remember that. Um, but yeah, we just continue to work, continue to scale. Um, one of the big lessons I learned here, which I have like a bunch of notes here, but the big lesson here is like investing in myself. So like the thing I did here, so we were 16 months in and then one of the big aha moments was like, hey, like I've been trying to do this all myself, like all ourselves. Like we we don't have a business background and we, ha we don't have, we know how to market, we don't know how to sell, like we don't know business. So we started investing in mentors. Um, and the first one we invested in, super scared, super skeptical, like this online, you know, business guy, he's built businesses before. So we, we paid the invoice, freaking scared, this is like all of our money. And it ends up working out. You know, we, this is the first thing that took us from like zero to, you know, 10, 20 K a month in the business. And it was freaking massive. Like it was crazy, life changing. And so we, we doubled down on that strategy. We're like, okay, we're gonna keep on scaling up, learning from others, learning from mentors. And so we end up investing in just a whole lot of mentors, like dozens and dozens of people. Here's a few pictures with um, a few of the guys. Um, and yeah, like doing this, like paid off just about every single time. There was some time we got burned, but most of the time, like guys are legit. And we really do learn some valuable skill sets from them. So it was a huge lesson I had. So don't try and do everything yourself. Definitely learn from other people who are ahead of you. Um, and then the business really started to take off. I learned a lot about copywriting, marketing, and this was like, Actually, like during this whole period, like 2016 through 2021, like I was kaizening, which kaizening means um, consistent improvement in Japanese, by the way. Kaizening is like a practice I, I do like to this day is like trying to block out time every single day to learn and to skill up. All right, so learning time basically every single day for, what is this, four, five, six years. So six years of learning where I'm studying copywriting, marketing, psychology, all these things because I want this, I want this so freaking bad. And so I do this every day for literally six years. Um, and so I, I finally become pretty decent at, you know, writing and copywriting and marketing. So content wise, this is August, 2022. I start to go really viral. This is on Twitter. 
87 million views in one month, you know, getting 20K followers in that time. And my, my Twitter just started to really blow up. And, you know, we grew, um, grew my Twitter too. And now it's at like 130,000 followers or so. Um, so it really blew up during this time. Business started to really boom. And, you know, this is where things got kind of crazy um, and surreal to me. Um, we got invited to speak on, I don't know if this is blurry, but this is um, at the Client Engine Co Conference in Tampa, Tampa Bay. So they're like a big consulting company for a lot of entrepreneurs. This is, you know, me speaking on stage in front of 120 entrepreneurs. I'm um, talking about what we built. Uh, spoke on Fox Sports Radio twice, which was pretty crazy, pretty cool. Um, yeah, I remember that. My, my, my parents were really, I don't know, they are really excited, really happy for me. Um, and then we hit 107K a month um, in 2023 there. So this is kind of like what happened. This is, you know, me at, you know, 22 years old. This was very surreal for me and really crazy. But as you can see, like this right here, like people only see like the screenshot and they see like this app and they see this cool thumbnail and they don't see like this arrow. They don't see what took place in this whole entire time period. They don't see this. And so that's why I'm making this video. I wanted to show you this, like transparent, like what the heck happened and the journey. Cause it was, it was a long journey. Like it's not just like, it's not like a three month transformation, not a six month transformation. This is 2016 to 2023. That's, you know, what is that? Seven years, seven years of hard work. Now, given some of this time, I wasn't as focused as I need to be. Given some of this time, I was partying. But seven years of having this goal in mind, having this direction, having, you know, my, my you know, missile fired in this direction. I'm shooting the missile. I'm trying to get to the destination. All right, I'm traveling on this map. I'm following the GPS, trying to get there for seven years. It's a long time, man. It's not, it's not simple. It's not overnight. Um, but it is so worth it. Um, and now... You know, now, uh, you know, what we've done with the fitness co company, my team runs it now. So my team is growing it. My team is scaling it. I don't really have any involvement in that. And I, you know, started another company now, you know, acquisition pilot, doing what I love. I also, whoops, can I zoom in here? Here we go. Also got engaged about two months ago at the time of this recording. I can only do that because I really do feel good financially. All right. I feel like I have freedom. I, I can, I have the ability to generate a lot of income. Um, because of all this time period, the seven year, sl you know, I don't know what, what, like, what is the word I'm looking for? The seven year battlegrounds, the seven year, you know, rocky cutscene phase where I'm freaking skilling up. I'm going hard. I'm fighting every single day. Um, that's what it took. And so now I'm, I'm engaged now and I'm very excited for, you know, my future wife, future family to come. And that's only because of this stuff. Because I've worked in freaking hard and Kaizening every day um, and learning these lessons along the way. Another big thing is losses equals lessons. So like mindset is huge. Like a lot of people think like they'll start out thinking mindset is woo woo. And then they, everyone, everyone realizes how important mindset is. So like during all these years, I had to learn that losses equals lessons. So I had to, I had to look, especially like when we really started this real company and really come into this for four years, all the losses, like there were so many losses that took place. So many problems that came up you know, payment processors, um, ad shut down, blah, 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 blah. And go on for years about mistakes and problems that came up in the business. But we had to always look at losses as lessons. Okay, this thing went wrong. Let me, what can I learn from this? Always taking on that, that mindset and that view of what can I learn from this? Not just, oh, we just lost, it's over, it sucks. This is a good thing. We can learn from it. This is a blessing. That's a mindset I absolutely fully adopted. It's transformed my life. So with that, um, that is my story. That is how, you know, I became a hundred K a month online fitness coach. Um, and yeah, if you are a coach yourself um, and you want to grow your business, you can click the link below. If you want, um, I have a calendar links. So you can book a call if you want. It's a free demo. If not, no worries. Um, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead, like comment and subscribe. I appreciate you so much. You are amazing. You are a legend and I will see you in the next one.